Welcome to the Honeymoon Mindset Podcast, discussing topics to give you tips and tools so you can choose to live your relationship with a honeymoon mindset. Here are your honeymoon mindset experts, James and Beth. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Honeymoon Mindset. I am James. So grateful and honored that you have joined us on this podcast again. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. I greatly appreciate it. I want to talk about one of the biggest things that hurts a relationship. It's assumptions. It's assuming that something bad is going to happen or something's going on when something really isn't. And sometimes it is. Therefore, I know in my relationship with Beth, I struggle with a lot of insecurities. Insecurities aren't real. Insecurities is your brain playing with your emotions, your feelings. Your feelings and emotions are like three seconds, four seconds long, 30 seconds long. And when we keep thinking on them, building on it, they get worse. They build, they grow. And then your brain goes everywhere. Why does your brain do that? It goes back to the amygdala. It's a little thing that the back of the base of your brain, when information comes in, it goes there first. It's trying to figure out, what is this? Is this familiar? Do I need to distort it, delete it? Do I need to make an assumption on it? Do I need to finally store it, make it a memory? That's a process that it goes through every time. Your amygdala, your amygdala is looking at events that happen brings it into you and you find other things in your past and it's something that's new or different it tries to compare it that's what I do all the time if some, if Beth is taking too long at the store my brain will automatically oh this has happened before this is going on but it's not true it's not real I start to look at the facts well what time does she leave I don't know I didn't really look at the clock so how long has she really been gone then? Well, I don't know. So I can't use that excuse because I don't know what time she left. Oh, it's just a quick run. Should be quick. Okay, but where does she have to go? It's like a 10-minute drive, 15-minute drive one way to town for us because we live in the country. So round trip alone, that's 30 minutes. And if she goes into the store, parks, go in the store, it's going to be at least an hour okay so what time did she leave then so how do you know if it's taking longer than usual is it busier than usual what time of day is it so I start asking myself these questions and then I also look at past experiences this is a big one for me I look at past experience what has happened in the past when this has come up and when has happened there's something that's happened or she ran into somebody or it's traffic she got sidetracked on something briefly or she had a phone call for work or a phone call from her mom or somebody or one of her boys, there's a logical explanation. And she's always excited to see me when I when she comes home. That is my insecurities. Those are my assumptions. Your insecurities are assumptions. It's your brain. Your brain is trying to protect you for something that's not even there, that hasn't even happened and may never happen. It's one thing that Beth and I struggle with in our marriage right now. Nothing wrong that Beth did. It's me and my insecurities. And they go amok. And I do everything I can to control them. Everything I can do to tame them. And sometimes they just get the better of me. And then I have to apologize to Beth. I'm sorry, Beth, but... I got to ask, I did everything I could to control my insecurities and to tame them and to conquer them and take responsibility for them, but it's not working this time. I'm sorry. So I ask. Just like when Beth comes home with more groceries or more packages from the stores than I thought she did. It's like, sometimes that's just an instant set off for me. But I was like, wait a minute, Why? Sometimes she thinks of things that we need 
and can use or it might be low so she's just preparing ahead of schedule getting ahead so I stop and I listen to her I ask her sometimes she feels like she's getting the fifth degree she realizes it she hates it drives her crazy but she has to appease my insecurities to help tame them down They've gotten a lot better in the last two years since I've worked on myself. And the work that I have done has helped dramatically. Keep assuming things. Keep looking at those insecurities. They're assumptions. They're false assumptions. Your brain is trying to protect you from getting hurt again, from making you upset. And a lot of times all it does is the total opposite. You're getting worked up over nothing. There's a lot of times I'm expecting something or there's times where I, Beth, I need to talk to you. Or she says, I need to talk to you about something. It's like, oh, shoot, what now? And my brain will go off. My brain will think about anything and everything. Just like two, three weeks ago, my son said he had to talk to us about something. It's like, okay, what is this now, kid? Usually it's something drastic because he usually doesn't want to talk about something. So when he wants to talk about something, it's something serious. So we better pay attention. Yeah, my brain went all over. He got his fiance pregnant. He they got married. They're breaking up. They're he got hurt at work or he lost his job. Um he dropped off my brain was going like that a mile a minute. Finally I said, It doesn't matter what it is. It's not gonna change how I care about my son. It's not gonna change who he is. Depending on what it is, yeah, it's going to affect his life, and I'll be there to support him in any way, shape, or form. So I just blushed it on that fact. It didn't bother me. Yeah, things were going through my brain, but it's like, okay, until I know, there's no point in me thinking about it. Then when he finally did come over, he said he got deployed for a year. And I was fine with that. Well, I'm not fine with it, but I'm okay with it, because I didn't stress about it. I didn't worry about what he had to talk to us about. I knew he wanted to talk to us about and I'd let him tell us. I wouldn't assume or jump to conclusions. Assuming things, assuming the worst, is one way to wreck a marriage, to wreck a relationship with your partner. How do you deal with assumptions? How do you take control of them? First off, pay attention to when they happen. Pay attention when they happen. Is there a certain time that they happen and then ask yourself why why is this happening ask your partner do I do this every single time you come home like for Beth that's like do I do this every time about what you buy and question she's like yeah you do almost and how do I come across well sometimes you come across pretty mean pretty angry okay well let's start there how it comes across And as you're asking yourself why, looking at the question why, how often has it started? Try to go back. This is where we talk about doing a journal. You ask yourself, I get frustrated with my wife, Beth, when she comes home. Why? And then you keep asking yourself why. Yeah, you're going to go seven, ten layers deep, and you're going to get upset. You're going to shed some tears because you may not realize what started that insecurity. But you need to ask yourself, why? Do you like it? Do you not like it? And most of the times when I've asked why, a lot of times when I go back and ask why, there's completely different outcomes from when, for what, from what, what my brain is thinking. It's not the same. It's completely different. So why is my brain thinking about that way? So it can go to the negative so I had to stop thinking about that and then one thing I did was oh she came home or she had a reason for the extra groceries that she bought because she was planning a meal that I didn't realize or we're getting low on some sort of supplies in the pantry that I didn't realize or hey the boys have been talking about pizzas or tacos so she stocked up on some taco supplies so we had it on hand for when we wanted tacos and so I'm fine with it that helps curb my insecurities oh she's taking too long again like I said I ask myself questions 
I question those thoughts. The other thing I've been doing a lot lately now is I look at my heart. Okay, is this really what's going on? No, Beth loves you. She tells you she loves you. She wants you. There's nobody else. She did have a few errands to run after work, so she'll be home when she gets home. I got to get back into my heart. What is your heart saying about those thoughts and feelings? Or is it just your brain? Yeah, but my husband's always coming home. My partner is always coming home late. My partner is always assuming this or that. But why? If you notice this, ask him nonchalantly in a non-demeaning or attacking way. Hey, can we talk about something, please? Ask him first. It takes down that defense of the amygdala. The amygdala is ready to fight or flee. And when you ask permission to talk, it calms it down right away. Then you can talk about those insecurities or bring it up to your partner. You're not picking on them. You're not trying to throw them under the bus. You're trying to ask, what's going on here? Why is this? And if you're asking it, say, hey, I have been asking myself this. Why? And if you have been working on it, talk to your partner. That's the other thing. A lot of times when we make these assumptions, we're not communicating to our partner. Or we're creating unknown expectations for our partner. How can they meet those expectations if they're unknown? It's impossible. So then we start assuming, oh, they don't care. They don't love me. They don't what a No. Now you're making excuses for those assumptions. Now you're validating them. Quit validating those assumptions. Well, if your partner's coming home late all the time, maybe there's a reason. Maybe you need to ask them and talk to them. And if you have a fear or you're worried about, again, ask them for a conversation. Talk to them. Then you can express to them that you need to talk. And when you talk, then you can express your feelings and thoughts. And they may not realize they're doing it. They may not think it's a big deal, but to you it is. To deal with assumptions, journal about them, ask yourself why, ask yourself why in the moment, and start taking actions, figure out where do I want to be? Is this who I really want to be? For me, do I want these assumptions? Do I want to feel like I'm attacking my wife every time she comes home from the grocery store or shopping? Or if something's taking too long, what's going on? Uh, No, of course not then I'm just coming off as an ass. Somebody who doesn't care, who's trying to control her. No, I like my wife's free spirit. I like her ability to think and do things and take care of the family the way she does. To me personally, I think that's probably one thing that's wrecked my first marriage. Because I know I did that in my first marriage, which didn't help. So no, like I said, I learned a lot about me from my first marriage. And I did a lot of growing. If you are in a second relationship, very serious, committed relationship or marriage, look at your first as a learning tool. Not, oh, that went wrong, that wrong, I was part. No, you need to admit your mistakes and grow from your mistakes. And just like with Beth, no, I want her to come home. I want her to be excited about what she got. I want to know what she's planning and thinking. But I still, at times, need to work on my presentation how I come across and we talk about it and then once I have more of these positive experience I focus on these when my assumptions and insecurities kick in when things happen and if I can bring them back to a time then I talk to Beth about it or I say but what all happened at that moment in time like what happened before that time What happened after that time? What actually happened during that incident, that memory? Is it really how I remember it? Because most of the time, your brain only remembers maybe 50% at most of a certain given memory. And it makes up the rest. That's how tricky your brain is. Your brain doesn't do it intentionally. Your brain does it to protect you. Therefore... To deal with your insecurities, journal about it. Ask yourself why. In the moment, ask yourself why. Think of other times. 
and how it turned out positively. Ask your heart. And then when they do come up, is this really the way I want to be? No, you don't. How do you want to be when your partner comes home? From shopping, from store, from work, from their parents' house or family's house. You want to be there to greet in a warm, loving embrace by you, by your partner, and vice versa. You want both of it. The other thing I think of is, how do I want to be treated? Is this the way I want to be treated? So why am I doing it? What am I being insecure about? Am I being insecure about myself? Not so much about Beth, but why is it coming across that way? Again, you can journal about that. Assumptions are the one things that can really wreck a relationship. A lot of times I've been doing some research. Well, he's always coming home late. Or they're always coming home late. Or they always have a weird smell. Ask him about it. Talk to him. If you are coming home late, you're doing something, you should be the first one to say, hey, I'm sorry I'm running late. And don't assume. There's a lot of times Beth and I will say, I told you that last week, James. I don't remember it. I get busy with stuff or it's a couple weeks down the road. I get busy with stuff. I don't remember it. I don't put it on a calendar, which I need to, which I've done and changed and working on now. And then we'll start talking about it and the conversation is like, okay, I remember that conversation. I'm so sorry I forgot. I admit my mistakes and I start trying to figure out how to make changes. No, I'm very slow about making changes. My kids will attest to that. But I make changes for who I want to be. Who do I want to become? Not, well, this is just who I am. This is the way I would. No. If you want to improve, you got to look to the future, to who you don't want to be, and look at now. What can you change now so it doesn't happen again in the future? It takes time. It takes time to retrain your brain. Up to 21 days. Almost up to 30 some days, I believe, to actually get it concrete. Quit assuming. So, in the moment, how do you deal with assumptions? Let's recap. First, in the moment, ask yourself why. What has happened in the past? What has gone about? Also, journal about it. So that's the second thing. Journal about it. Why? Why do I do this? Is there something in the past that's making me want to do this? Talk to your partner about it. That's a huge thing. Talk to your partner about it. They're going to ask what they can do to help because they only want you better. They want to see you improve yourself. So what can you do? Look at to the future self. Who do you really want to be? Is this who you really are? And at the same time, it's like, ask your heart. Your heart is your th- is your feelings, your emotions. Your brain is your, your thinking, your cognitive, your analytical aspect of your being. And then as you look to the future who you want to be, start, what can I do now to make changes? What can I grasp on now that can make me a better person for tomorrow? Quit assuming. Deal with your assumptions because there's something there in the past that's creating them. And talk to your partner about them. Let them know. Let them help. Bring it up to them if you see something in them. Ask permission to talk to them, to set up so that amygdala is at ease. They know it's coming. It's expected. And then have a conversation, an open-ended conversation, making yourself vulnerable and talk about it and ask them to help you. Not their way, but your way to change and how you need to change so it works for you. And when you start dealing with those assumptions, those insecurities, it's only going to make your honeymoon mindset all the more stronger and more beautiful. Don't assume. Communicate. And grow. And your honeymoon mindset will be all the more beautiful for you and your partner to live in paradise forever. Thank you for listening to this edition Honeymoon Mindset. Sorry. And we'll talk to you later.